Thoughts on holding AMC through dividend payment or selling before? Been in the play for 18 months. Not financial advice. Um, it's ultimately up to everybody else, but for me, I'm going to hold on to everything. I'm not selling shit. I'm not selling a damn thing. Not Ape, not AMC, nothing. And the reason why is because all of the equity that is getting moved over to Ape is going to be solely in the control of shareholders. And if retail shareholders are the only registered shareholders, then they are going to be the only ones that are actually holding on to those shares. All the day traders, they surrender all of that power when they you know, jump in and out on the 19th, uh, you know, whatever, or on the 21st or 22nd, their shares don't matter in the grand scheme of things. All of the institutions that have been holding are likely to continue to do so up until a point where they feel like they have the price that they're looking for, but their strategy is to hold for the long term. So if they're in that same camp, they'll just be holding too. I see no reason to give up those ape shares. And if you hold on to them and the price of those demanding, uh, if the demand for them goes up going forward, then you're holding on to an asset that's unique unto itself. And the price will only go up as demand needs, uh, as demand meets supply. If there's a lack of supply just because we refuse to sell them, then by its very nature, the price has to go up. If, if there are, um, uh, what's it called, naked shorts, of course, that would be the case. That is especially where, where the importance of these ape shares matters the most. So what's going to end up happening on Monday, uh, on the 22nd, once those shares are supposed to settle into everyone's accounts, we're likely to see a very high, extreme spike in failures to deliver for every naked short that's currently out there. The reason why this happens is because the registered shareholders of AMC are only supposed to get one share of APE. And that for every registered share of AMC, there will only be one share of APE. So that means that the company is only going to release those shares to shareholders and to nobody else. So if none of the apes sell their shares, then it's going to result in failures to deliver because other shares aren't going to end up in the accounts they're supposed to. When you hear stories of individuals, retail shareholders in AMC that are entitled to ape, but do not receive their shares because they're failing to deliver, that is your sign that shit is out of control. If we get that story, that everybody is failing, is not receiving their ape shares even though they know they're entitled to them, then that should only entice you to hold even tighter. The reason why is because those failures to deliver can't be reconciled unless someone's willing to sell. So if you see the price in ape collapse as people are saying, I'm not getting my shares, that's panic is the last thing that you should do. Now, this is not financial advice. You have to do what's right for you. But if you see the price coming down sharply, especially on APE, and people are saying, I'm not getting my shares, I can't get out, blah, 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 then those are being fucked with. The price is being fucked with, and the brokers are not able to actually deliver the shares. So they're using psychological manipulation in order to short with whatever they have on hand to drive the price down. Or you have just a bunch of weak-handed retailers that as soon as they receive their ape shares decided to sell them for whatever they could get for them and i feel like that's the wrong attitude because what you're holding on to is the one equity that that adam aaron and amc the company can sell and i know people are going to be pissed at me for this but dilution for amc is going to be the thing that saves their company because right now they're buried under a massive amount of debt that needs to be settled you say, why not buy, sell Ape and buy AMC? Because Ape is unique to itself. They can't rehypothecate those shares. That's what I'm telling you. They can't rehypothecate them. They're unique to themselves. If every single Ape shareholder refused to sell their shares, then the demand for them would go up. And you'll probably see Ape shares squeeze in price before AMC does. But more than likely, AMC would follow its price. 
of course, if people lend them out, then that could lead to rehab obligation. Yeah. yeah. If people sell their shares and they go over to the broker, then the broker can rehypothecate them. Or or lend them, no? Yes. Is it the same? Yes. Has there has there been any, any talk of people like uh the, the comp- like locking them up in computer share? There's been a lot of talk about that and people keep asking me if all of the shares will be direct registered with compute uh computer share. I have no idea. I don't know how they're doing the dividend. I don't know what broker they're going through to issue it. I don't know who their underwriter is. I don't know. I don't know all of those details. If it goes through computer share, if somebody can supply me with some form of evidence, I can confirm or deny it. But so far, I haven't seen anything to indicate that those shares are going through computer share. That's just a rumor that's going around that's totally unfounded and baseless as far as I can tell. No one's shown me anything conclusive that proves that AMC is using computer share to direct register the shares for the issuance. I certainly didn't mean to propagate a, a baseless rumor. I just thought, uh, you know, seeing as um, you're the, good, Dave. I'm just I I'm a little bit frustrated because I see everybody asking the the question about like where is is uh, everybody is just saying it as though it's true, and we don't actually know. That's that's those are the individuals that I'm frustrated with. Is the ones that are saying ape shares are being direct registered through CompuShare and I asked the question, okay, where's the proof of that? Like show me some evidence. Is that in the filings? Did I miss something? Am I stupid? Am I blind? Show me that I'm wrong. Because I would love it if I'd be wrong, but so far I haven't seen anything. Okay, so in in regards to the question about dilution, Adam Aaron is not stupid. All right. He understands what dilution does to a company when you do it in massive numbers when you just sell thousands upon well millions upon millions of shares all at once it doesn't do anything except damage the company massively adam aaron uses his shares very intelligently he's done things that actually creates investors with those shares for example he went to his uh he went to his landlords that were managing all amc properties because AMC doesn't own their property, they lease it. They lease it from land uh, from landlords. So in order to compensate them, he used shares and he turned his landlords into AMC owners. They became shareholders. And by doing that, he deferred all of the debt and they wrote it off. So that's the kind of intelligent maneuvering that Adam Aaron, through his more than 30 years of experience in the business world, can do for this company. But he does need to have access to shares in order to use them. There's been a whole lot of people that are screaming about Adam Aaron diluting on shareholders and just trying to wreck the squeeze. He's trying to create value for the company. The squeeze will happen on its own if it just increases in value. If you take away the debt that AMC has right now, the short thesis is dead permanently. The short thesis has been murdered. It's done. There's no more short thesis once that $5 billion is gone. And that's what Adam needs the shares for. That's what he needs them for. He can come up with all sorts of creative ways to make sure that he's not diluting shares directly into the float. He just needs shares in order to trade them to someone or get them to buy senior notes or some sort of a convertible device, anything like that, where they can't redeem them right away, but they guarantee and buy them in advance at a lower price. And that creates investors. That creates an institutional investor who is in favor of the company's value rising. Adam Aaron's not going to do at the market offerings while the price is this low. He's not going to do that. The first time he did an at the market offering was when AMC's price had ballooned all the way up to $70. They finally did that at the market offering at a time when AMC's share price was through the ceiling. And yes, it did drive the price down. It absolutely did, but it also gave the company enough cash to buy back over a billion dollars in debt 
It gave them tons of cash runway for the next two years, and it gave him the ability to acquire the most profitable theater chain on the West Coast, Arclight Theaters. He acquired the most profitable movie theaters in the entire Western Hemisphere with that money. That is what you should be considering. He is an extremely intelligent businessman. He does know what he's doing. He was able to save a dying cruise line, Norwegian Cruises. That company should have died a decade ago. He came in, and that was his first interim CEO position, and he absolutely, he crushed every single piece of FUD and short thesis that was betting against that company instantly. He came in and turned that company around in less than five years, saved it from absolute chaos and certain bankruptcy. So it's worth putting some faith in Adam Aaron that although he may not be necessarily invested in squeezing AMC, he is absolutely invested in making the company valuable. And if he is able to do that, then a squeeze will happen on its own. He has the most power to drive the value of this company to a point that AMC has never yet reached. People need to put more faith in him that he is actually invested in the outcome of this company. Because if AMC's price goes to $1,000, guess what happens to his net worth? He'll never have to work again, ever. He could just cash out a few thousand shares and retire and just let the rest of his shares sit indefinitely in his portfolio and collect dividends until into perpetuity. Adam Aaron is invested in the success of AMC. Anybody that doubts that has not been paying attention. So it's really worth, really worth investing your faith that Adam Aaron knows what he's doing. He is not like other CEOs that dilute companies to death. He has successfully brought companies from the brink four separate times, including AMC, and he's doing it again. Put some faith in him and trust that he knows what he's doing. He is one of those few CEOs that is really out there for his shareholders. He does care about us. There is something very different about that guy that separates him from the other CEOs that I have witnessed. So it's it behooves all of you to put a little bit of faith in what he's doing.